Hi, Gary. Hi, Leo. Gary, been a while since we caught up. Spoke to James yesterday about the markets. We had the inflation announcement from the MPC holding steady. What's your take on things? Well, I think that was exactly the right decision for the Bank of England to do nothing with interest rates because the problem you currently have with the rise in prices is due to disruption in the global supply system. And that was inevitable. You've just finished a major pandemic. The supply chains are not going to be working properly. Suppliers can't anticipate demand as they were able to before the start of the pandemic. So you're going to sometimes get surges in demand and suppliers unable to meet it. That pushes prices up. Now, increasing interest rates won't solve that problem. This is not a case of uh, demand exceeding supply capacity. It's just a case of certain spikes. And before the Bank of England Act, and don't get me wrongly, I'm all in favour of getting interest rates up to more normal levels, but they don't want to act until they know what the true problem is. So they've done the right thing yesterday. So what's it going to take to get interest rates back to normal levels? Uh, I just think you need to uh, the economy just to settle down. Um, once once these the difficulties with a supply of certain goods and energy prices start to get back to normal, um, I think you're going to have a period where with all the additional government spending, we will find that aggregate demand is actually quite high. So um, because obviously you've got demand for consumers, demand from companies, and then you've got a lot of uh, demand from government that is spending a lot of money. So we are going to put a lot of pressure on, on total UK supply and likely then if, if, if consumers get a bit uh, excited and start to uh, demand a lot more things, the Bank of England will try and dampen down some of that demand and, and ease interest rates. Uh, I, I, sure. When I say ease, I mean ease, ease the, the softness of interest rates and start, start pushing them up again. And do you think what kind of impact is this going to have on sort of productivity and people, you know, jobs availability, unemployment and the likes? Can you see any of that correlating with all of this? Well, theoretically, um, there should be sort of an inverse relationship between inflation and and unemployment. So you've got, you know, the old fashioned Phillips curve said if you want um, if you want um, uh, to get people employed, allow inflation to run hot, and um, you know it, 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 that, that that relationship unfortunately is broken down. So I don't think that the interest rate issues would have very much influence on productivity at all. Theoretically, uh, low interest rates should encourage companies to invest a lot more in in their capacity, but that hasn't been happening. So mm -hmm. this is a classic Keynes. Um, uh, liquidity trap where it doesn't matter what you do with interest rates you can't get people to spend and savings rates have gone up a lot so the, a rise in interest rates won't help productivity but what they will do is provide some assistance for people that want to hold their certain proportion or a lot of their assets in safe places but at the moment with inflation sort of at anything between two and four percent depending on how you measure it either by CPI or RPI the purchasing power of their capacity, assuming they're getting 1% per annum interest rates, which generally they're not, but the purchasing power is of their capital is dropping. So the faster interest rates can be pushed up, the greater assistance it will be for those people that are holding assets in very low risk areas, such as national savings or bank and building society deposits. Sure. Gary, I, I don't know if this is a valid question or not, and forgive me if it isn't, but this is all inside the UK. How does this make us look outside the UK? And from that perspective externally, is there any value that might be coming in that can boost productivity, performance, stability of the economy in the UK? How does that look towards the funds that you're investing in? What's your view? What kind of things are you investing in? What are your strategies? Maybe, maybe open-ended, maybe quite a few questions, but what does that make you think? Well, first up, I, I, I think the UK has dealt with this 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 pandemic pretty well. I, I, I have reservations about some of the things the government does, but what, what we haven't had is a major recession or depression, which would, would perhaps was possible because of the pandemic. And I think 
the Chancellor's speedy response to help people stay um, uh, on furlough, stay hooked up with their employer, even though they weren't working, has been a brilliant innovation. And I, I think we solved the PPE problem quite quickly. And of course, we were at the forefront of the vaccination. So I think the UK has actually done a good job. Probably the one big, big mistake it made was sending people older people out from hospitals back into nursing homes in the early stages of the pandemic. And that, of course, was disastrous. But you, I think we're viewed overseas reasonably well. Um, I think mm -hmm. when you come back onto the investment side, um, the UK has uh, quite a big financial sector and it doesn't have a massive technology sector. So as a stock market, our, stock, our, our, our UK shares are generally more fairly valued than other places around the world. So at the moment, we quite like our domestic market and you can find lots of good gems. And that's that's why the UK Equity Fund has had such a fantastic run. Um, you know, it's 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 top since launch in its UK equity income sector, tops it over five years. It's it's been great. And and the reason for that is we've been able to find little nuggets of value in some decent UK companies and they've paid us back quite handsomely. But there's still a lot of value there and you can pick up stocks at far less multiples with good balance sheets. Um, I better valued than you can say the 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 big tech companies in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And are the coaches funds performing as you would expect at the moment? Yeah, they are. I mean, they they the, the long term results are exceptional. You know, so if you could throw the clock back ten years and say to me, would you settle for every one of your your um, multi-asset funds being top quartile uh, in terms of absolute performance and top quartile in terms of sharp ratios in 10 years time of course <coughs> I'm going to say yes and of course then we you know and, and, and we got recognized for that with various industry awards and then the the UK equity and the global income funds have also done very well since launch as I said UK has been outstanding in terms of its uh, its its sector um, yes, I, I, I'm over the moon with them. You know, you, 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 it, 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 it makes you want to work hard to, to, to keep your position. Um, but we have a good process and we follow it religiously. And I think mm -hmm. that's a key with, with asset management. Don't, don't breach your, your, your risk ceilings. Stay diversified and try and find assets that have got a margin of safety. Um, mm. uh, we don't do anything that's particularly um, new, but perhaps one of the things we try to do is use the availability of data to run our models and analyze things uh, quickly, uh, more quickly than say, you know, Benjamin Graham could have done in when he wrote security analysis in 1934. The big change today is not, not the theories, it's the tools available for looking at that data. So we try and use those to the best effect we can. But yeah, you know, I mean, there's some good stocks in the portfolios. I'm always worried about whether there's going to be a downturn, and that's what clients pay me to do. They, you know, they 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 pay us to to be concerned about whether there's going to be a collapse and try and make sure we've got as good a hedging as possible. That's 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 part of the job. But um, yeah, there's some good stuff around at the moment. There's some the, the, we're finding some nice nice gems of value. Excellent, Gary. Thank you very much for your time uh, today. Obviously seminars are coming up and we'll be having a bit more time there to listen to the investment team and we're all looking forward to that uh, we've got registration for the virtual seminar on the website courtes.co.uk looking forward to seeing everybody at the physical events looking forward to the virtual seminar looking forward to the year coming to a close and seeing how we've been doing thank you very much uh, Leo I, just to say that I, I am so looking forward to the seminars this year I, I, I think when you go through lockdowns you realize what you miss and it's so nice in december to catch up with so many people so if anybody's watching that and they can get along to the seminars it would be great to see them but of course if they've got concerns and 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 are trying to to protect we're going to do the virtual again aren't we so that's um we'll, we'll cover all bases but it will be nice Absolutely. to see people 
Yeah, and it, and it, you know there is limited availability in part for that to ensure safety and comfort for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so we're pushing, we're working as hard as we can. We've got some exciting venues as things are always evolving. The virtual, I think, is never going to go away in the future. We've got quite a lot of demand for the virtual. Equally, we've got a lot of demand for the physical. So looking forward to the whole thing and certainly yeah, be great. seminars in the years ahead. All right. Yeah. Talk to you soon, Gary. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers, Leo. Bye. Bye now. Bye.